This is We Who Are About to Die, and if the name doesn't clue you in, this is of course a gladiator simulator. It's an actual gladiatorial sim with some strategy elements and permadeath. And of course the idea is that, well, you're a gladiator and you're trying to survive a number of weeks of battles in order to accomplish some sort of goal, and that specific goal actually changes per gladiator you play. Things are a little bit randomly generated and there's a whole bunch of different weapons and armors and other pieces of equipment and things as well as all sorts of other strategy elements to help yourself survive. And first off, the thing I have to mention is that this game was made by one dude and I love covering games that are made by very small teams or even solo developers because that sort of thing just fascinates me that people can be capable of so many different technological things at once right like your coding and your artwork and your music and all the other bits of moving pieces that go into a full-fledged game and in this case it's actually quite a complex formula because this game uses a really interesting physical sort of physics-based combat system where you actually flail your mouse around in order to actually swing your weapon in various arcs and things, and uh, if you've ever played something like Ex Anima or uh, I guess Sweet Generis, whenever that comes out, then uh, you kind of know what I'm talking about. But yeah, it's a very heavily physics-based combat system that's extremely satisfying to get right, but very difficult to get used to because it is actually, uh, it's got a lot of moving parts. It's a pretty complicated game, which of course makes it all the more impressive that one person was actually capable of coming up with all this, which is why I wanted to say first and foremost props right away for actually being a solo dev on a project like this. That's very cool. So the way that it works is first off, you will roll up a gladiator and there are a bunch of different sort of random backgrounds that your chosen gladiator can have as well as a set of starting equipment. You may start with a history of say something like a slave, for instance, which is, was pretty common in real life. And a slave will have to donate half of the money they make so they won't be able to keep as much money, and they'll also have one fewer uh, fight choices per week, but they'll also not really have any sort of recurring weekly expenses, so this allows them to use the money that they do get in order to uh, train and improve themselves and gain other stuff a little bit faster. You have several different equipment slots that you'll actually be uh, kitting out, and this is important since it does use a physics-based combat system. This means that a weapon can contact your character at any point, so the individual pieces of armor that you have on all of those points actually do matter, and it doesn't just add up to an overall damage reduction armor score, and is more about the actual physical location that it takes up on your body. So you have main and offhand weapon slots, as well as a helmet and a uh, chest armor slot, and you've also got two pauldron slots and two... Uh, boot slots and you can actually equip these separately kind of like in Morrowind or something like that so you can be fashionably asymmetric if you want to be. There's a whole lot to do from the management side of things in between battles. So, for instance, you'll have a list of different pieces of equipment that you can buy from a store and every uh, every week, which means after every battle, the store will refresh itself with different things. You can also go to the uh, training area and actually buy some training gear and then select a number of skills to train which will auto train as long as you have enough gear uh, whenever you go to a battle. Basically going to a battle progresses one week so everything that takes that week will automatically progress after the battle is over. The skill system is pretty involved. There's a bunch of different skills for like each sort of weapon type as well as things like stamina and health. And uh, these will simply improve as you use them. So, you know, like if you're using a one-handed mace a bunch, then you will get more one-handed mace skill. But you can also train your skills up, like I mentioned, with the training equipment uh, in between matches. This is important, especially for stuff like stamina and health, in order to help get them pumped up a little bit higher a little bit sooner so you can have a better chance in the more difficult combats. Stamina itself is very extremely important in this game, so I highly recommend, beginner's tip by the way, uh, go ahead and train up your stamina early on as much as possible, because it will, uh, well, you'll thank yourself for it later when things get a little bit more complicated with multiple enemies facing you at once and things, because you can very easily run out of stamina trying to block all of their attacks and then not be able to retaliate or dodge out of the way or something. There's also a bunch of other stuff you can do in between matches. You can, uh, for instance, uh, trade between the two main currencies of the game. You have money, which is represented by like gold coins, and you've also got uh, fame, which is a sort of influence represented by this blue symbol. And you can choose to trade one for the other, although it's not a one-to-one -one trade by any means, but it can be helpful depending on what you're trying to do specifically. So you could uh, just use your fame and burn some of it in order to give yourself some money by fundraising, or you can do it the other way around and promote yourself by spending some money in order to get more fame. You can also repair your equipment, you can heal yourself because your health only regenerates a small amount after a match, so if you get very badly injured, you'll still be missing a good amount of health, although the healing does increase in price and decrease in effectiveness every time you use it each week and only resets after each battle, so you can't just spam it even if you're rich because you will eventually start to uh, run out of effectiveness. 
You can even bribe the individual patrons in order to increase their uh, love of you. And uh, we'll talk about the patrons in just a minute, but this is basically like an influence system that allows you to get better rewards and bonuses and things depending on the patron of the fight that you're currently uh, battling your way through. And there are also a number of other expensive long-term upgrades that you can get, like for instance, the Entourage upgrade, which will add a couple of extra people on your side whenever you're doing battles that have multiple people on your side to begin with. Some of them will have the Entourage modifier, which allows you to have the skill to get two more which can be invaluable sometimes. Uh, you can even donate quite a lot of money in order to actually uh, increase the rarity of the items you're likely to see in the shop so that you can actually uh, build up a higher rarity, more powerful arsenal more quickly if you have the money to do so. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in terms of the management of aspect of this game, a lot to do in between battles, but of course the main meat of the game mechanically is in the combat itself. So in order to get into a battle, you just will look each week at the list of potential battles that you have available to you and you can, uh, you can improve the list by spending some fame to give yourself more options each week. You can also do this for the shop or your auxiliary equipment slots. You just tend to use fame to get more slots of any kind on any of the things that allow you to do so. And then uh, each fight will show you a general overview of what you can expect from it, although sometimes not all the information is revealed to you at once. There could be question marks on what kinds of enemies you're facing or how many uh, other people are going to be with you or uh, some other modifiers for the match and things. And you can actually spend fame in order to reveal those modifiers to uh, have a better idea of what you're actually getting yourself into, but you don't have to. If you're low on fame or if you just really like the reward, it seems really good and you want to go for it, you can just do it if you want to and just hope that you don't uh, encounter anything too unexpected. But uh, there are a lot of different match types from actual pit fights, which is like a free-for-all, to multiple team battles, to even battles with a whole bunch of teams, like full-on skirmishes, to just one-on-ones or one versus minis or even many versus ones where the one will be extremely uh, well-equipped. And this is one of the aspects of the game that really shines. There's a ton of variety in the different kinds of battles that you'll face. Uh, each of them feels unique because of all the equipment variety, as well as all the different sets of rules that you could potentially be encountering each week. So that means the battles just, they, they're really varied. They have a whole lot of different moving parts to them that allow them to all feel very different. Even the arena itself that you're in can change. Every battle will tell you which arena that you're going to. And they have different shapes and sizes. Some of them have obstacles. Some of them can even uh, occasionally generate with uh, hazards like spinning platforms and other stuff like that that you gotta avoid. Or like big bladed traps that you can push your enemies into and things. It's it's pretty cool. And it definitely goes to a, a really good length to give you a large variety of fight types and uh, fight venues and things to make the combat more interesting by always having it spiced up with all these other rule sets and things. But then, of course, you get into the combat itself, which is an extremely satisfying affair, but it is also very difficult. Combat is mostly done by hovering your mouse over the enemy, holding left click, and then dragging in a specific direction and letting go. And the direction that you drag will determine the direction that the attack actually comes in from. So if you drag your mouse to the right, then your character will lift their arm up to the right, and then as soon as you let go of the mouse, they'll slash over to the left straight across. And uh, you can drag in all the directions. You can even do straight thrusts and overhead strikes as well. So there's a lot of variety to the combat. This means you can basically make up your own moves. And because the combat is heavily physics-based, this also means that other movements of your character can add or subtract from the individual attacks themselves. So you might have a really quick, snappy attack that doesn't do very much damage, but is harder to block. Or you may actually sprint while attacking from a certain direction to add a bunch of extra weight to the attack, which you can actually do. You can even uh, do things like shield bashes and kicks, depending on what else you're equipped with. This tends to make every single weapon feel very different. Even multiple weapons that look similar, like different types of longswords, for instance, will often still feel quite different because every weapon doesn't only have its own damage, but it also has its own uh, surfaces that you actually need to contact the enemy with, like where the blade is or where the, the metal bit is. So if you're using like a spear, for instance, and you just smack someone with the wooden shaft of it, then it's not gonna do anything. It's not really gonna do any damage at all. You have to actually get to the right distance in order for the tip of the spear to actually make contact correctly. So since every weapon has its own reach, that means that you have to get very used to how to actually wield each weapon at the optimal distance. And this is of course important for combating enemies as well. If your enemy is using some sort of pole arm or large two-handed weapon, then you might want to get in really close so that they can't actually generate a good solid swing on you at the right distance. Just stay aggressive, stay close, huddled up to them, and use a shorter weapon that you can actually draw back and attack in such close quarters where they won't be able to actually draw their weapon back enough to really hit you. So because of all this is very physics, 
based, then uh, this means that strategies are very emergent, right? You'd sort of come up with your own combat style on the fly based on what you're equipped with, what you're actually fighting, and how you understand uh, the weapon's swings to work. So the controls do take a little bit of getting used to, but they're actually pretty intuitive because the swings work in like a directly mouse-bound fashion, so all of your swings are based entirely around the direction that you're dragging the mouse. And each weapon will respond a little bit differently depending on what that weapon should logically do if you were to lift your hands in that direction. So learning each weapon is, uh, is a bit of a long affair because you have to actually take the time to understand how the swing arcs work and where the pointy bit is and stuff like that and how to optimally actually land it right in your enemy's face. But once you do get it down, it is extremely fun and very, very satisfying to actually land a good solid hit in this game. It feels extremely good. Of course, you do also have shields, and shields are pretty easy to use, you just hold them up. Although there is no, like, block state in this game per se, you, you can hold the right mouse button to block, but all that actually does is lift your shield up in front of you. Your shield is a physical object, so in order to block, you just simply have to put it in between you and the pointy thing the enemy is trying to shove through your nose, and you really just have to make sure that they meet each other. It's not about being in the block state so much as it's just about making sure the shield blocks physically the enemy's swing. Uh, this is also how weapon blocking is done, although with weapon block, you have to specifically keep your cursor on the enemy's weapon as it swings because this will actually push your weapon to be in the correct path to intercept it and actually block it. So blocking with a weapon is just as possible with a shield, it's just a little bit more difficult. Weapons and shields and stuff can actually break as well and there are even some battle types that have a modifier that makes it to where none of the combatants enter with any weapons at all and uh, the crowd will actually throw in stuff all the time. Even in normal battles they'll throw extra weapons and shields in and things and you can just go and pick them up whenever you you want. You can simply tap Q to drop your shield or tap E to drop your weapon whenever and just switch on the fly and you are encouraged to do so sometimes. This also means that you can throw items and there are also some weapons that are specifically meant to be thrown. Throwing in this game is very hard to get right because it's extremely timing based. You have to basically do like an overhead swing and then right as it swings forward at just the right angle you press the drop button and it will fling the weapon forward. It's really hard to get right but it does feel extremely good when you get it and to reward you the weapon model will will actually stick out of the enemy physically and you can even go up and pick it up and stuff. So this all means that the combat system in this game is just ridiculously fun. It's super fun to do. It can be a little bit janky at times because you're talking about like procedural animations and stuff when it comes to physical hits, sometimes making your enemies' bodies recoil in strange ways and things, but this is just a small amount of jank to be honest considering how much openness a system like this has, you expect a little bit, and it's really not disruptive jank that actually makes the game control badly or perform wrong or anything like that. It's just a little bit of visual silliness occasionally, which is really surprising to me for a solo physical based project. I mean, physics-based combat systems are notoriously buggy and difficult to manage, so the fact that this one works so well comparatively is really cool. Combat is highly lethal, as you would expect in this game, meaning uh, neither side is going to be super tanky. Even if you have very good armor, you can't just tank like a mace to the face a bunch of times. Both of you die pretty quickly, and uh, if you manage to win, then you'll get a certain amount of money and fame dependent on how you did. And if you're able to uh, vary up your attacks, taunt the enemies, and just be more exciting in battle in general, you can actually whip up the crowd, which will cause you to get more fame at the end of the battle. Uh, your fame can also be multiplied or even reduced depending on the gear that you're equipped with, and every piece of uh, armor and every weapon will actually show you what their fame multiplier is if they have one. Uh, this is what those auxiliary slots in your inventory are for, by the way. In order to actually repair items, because they do take durability damage between battles and they can break and need replaced, if you want to repair them, you actually have to put them in the auxiliary slots and spend the money on a repair and then do a battle, and then when you come back, they'll be repaired, which means if you want to repair something, you need a replacement for that slot unless you want to go into the next battle without anything in that slot at all, which could be a big problem if it's, for instance, your weapon or your chest armor or something that you really need. There's also the patron system, which I'm hoping is going to be developed a little bit more than it currently is now, because right now it doesn't make a tremendous difference, and I'm not entirely sure what their plan for it is or what his plan for it is, but uh, I would like to see it make a little bit more of a difference or have some more avenues for uh, burning this influence on various things and stuff, but right now the way that it works is whenever uh, you go into a battle, it is being held by one of the patrons, and each patron has their own sort of sphere of things that they appreciate, and whenever you complete one of their battles successfully, you will earn a bunch of favor for them, which is shown as a percentage 
percentage, but you will lose a percentage of favor for all of the other patrons, but it's a much smaller amount than what you earn. So you can sort of balance them, but you're encouraged to focus on maybe two of the patrons in order to uh, get better payouts and stuff from their battles. The more favor you have, the more favorable they view you, so they'll give you better rewards if they're the ones that are uh, actually patronizing that particular battle. And I think you can also sometimes get some buffs or some otherwise like useful effects if you get really high favor with some of them. So yeah, as far as a gladiator sim goes, this is excellent. The combat is super fun. The actual simulation elements with the managing your training and your equipment and stuff are very well done. There's a huge variety of equipment. There's even a Kopesh, importantly, and it's been scientifically proven that Kopeshes are in fact awesome, so I'm glad to see one in this game. Although I'm also a huge fan of the flails in this game. There's something about the way that the chain sort of straightens out and you get just the perfect distance to really like nail someone with it. It feels really good to use a flail. I just really like them for some reason. But yeah, this is just, this is one of those games that you've got to spend a little bit of time with to really learn it and understand all the various management and combat mechanics, but it is very rewarding if you actually do learn it. So I highly recommend this, even in its current early access state, it feels quite polished with just a little bit of expected jank here and there. And uh, for a single solo developer project, this is really promising and I'm very happy to see them seeing some good success with this because they absolutely deserve it. So uh, I'll put the link in, uh, in the description below this video to the uh, Steam store page if you want to check out the early access campaign for this game yourself, please do. It is really fun. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.